People expect me to say mobile learning a lot because I guess I'm one of the pioneers of mobile learning, but I really try energetically to avoid saying it. Because it looks like um, something that clever people did in universities. It's kind of quite an exclusive club. It's a research project or it's a, a research agenda. And it, and, it, and it was something that happened before 2008. You know, and in 2008, the money ran out. Um, you know, and the world economic climate became very different. We couldn't just spend money doing cute things in universities for, for 50 students. We, we have to look at a, a very different basis uh, for sustainable learning with mobiles. Um, and, and that's part of saying that educators need to look outside, not inside, and work with everyone else, not think that they can work on behalf of everyone else. All of our experiments in mobile learning, I think, you know, 95%, have been done on the basis that we, the researchers, provide the devices for the students. Um, so we haven't got a, a fundamental model that moves away from that. Um, and actually, we haven't got the money to continue doing it either. So if we want to make any of the use of technology, especially a, a much broader portfolio of technology, if we want to exploit that in education, then we have to think about how is it going to be sustainable? It's going to be sustainable if we use the technology that our students bring with them. So, OK, we'd like them to bring their own devices, but actually they're the people in control of their own devices. We used to be in control of the university computers, but we're not in control of our students' mobiles or tablets. And so all of a sudden that alters the dynamics in the classroom. It alters where the control is. You know, we used to have regulations that say, this is what you can do on our computer, this is what you can do through our network, but now it's their network, it's their tablet, it's their laptop, it's their um, uh, provider, their coverage. The first thing that students will do when they leave university is stop using Moodle. Um, you know, they will move into a world that isn't managed and contained like Moodle is or, or WebCT. It's just pff, chaos, uh, chaos and abundance. And if they are to be lifelong learners, they need to have the critical skills to know what is good stuff and good people and what is bad stuff and lunatics. Um, you know, so they need what we're now calling digital literacy you know, critical digi digital literacy, so they can read, comprehend, value, judge, valorise what they find in the outside world and learn from it sensibly and critically. So they're not learning that the earth is flat or the sun goes round the earth um, or who knows, the earth was created in seven days 4,000 years ago. Um, you know, so they've got those critical skills to know that this is what we need to look for so that we can find the good stuff and contribute to the good stuff as well. So, so that's probably answered several different questions. I mean, what is the role of mobile, but actually what is the role of teachers and what is the role of education? The situation is still deeply problematic, actually. I'm, I'm giving a very kind of... Um, futuristic utopian view of how education could evolve and so at the one hand you have uh, maybe people like me or policy makers in ministries saying mobile technology is very good and maybe head teachers in schools prohibit mobile technology or confiscate mobile technology um, and part of that may be to do with losing control and losing authority or losing identity you know what am I now um, but also there's just a kind of a lot of social issues about what is the etiquette in the classroom 
you know, if you say, okay, mobiles have a function in learning, how does that change the kind of social behavior? Can we have a, you know, incoming calls? Can everyone have their phone on the desk? Can the kids have their phone on the desk? Can they make calls? What is it they can look at? You know, what, what websites can they go to? What websites can they not go to? Um, all of that is still, the etiquette of all of that is still very problematic. Um, and, and clearly there is still for children, uh, what in England we would call a duty of care. You know, they are in the legal protection of the school. So we can't have them using mobile technology to access pornography. And we could create blacklists for our computers on our network, but how do we create blacklists for their phones with their providers? You know, that, that's a kind of technological way of looking at it in the context of a legal problem. But there is a, you know, a slightly bigger social problem around that. The problem of the etiquette in the classroom is actually just another manifestation of a wider social readjustment. Um, so in our social behaviour, if we were having a conversation face to face before the invention of the mobile phone, we know what to do. Um, now we have a mobile phone, I get an incoming call and I have to learn or develop a set of social cues so that I'm trying to say, yeah, this is important, my conversation with you is important, so I need to kind of talk here, maintain eye contact with you. You know what, I, and it, there's a whole new social repertoire around how our society and our social practices, social relations work now that there's this extra thing in the room all the time. And another aspect of that, as I say, is the, the idea of absent presence which is the fact that we might all be physically co-located, you know, in a lounge, in a room. But actually, our technologies will be connecting us to other um, communities, activities, resources online, and disconnecting us from the people in front of us. Um, and so there's a lot of research about what exactly does that mean? You know, does it mean we have lots more social relationships but very very shallow one you know has Facebook turned friendship into stamp collecting um, you know how many followers how many friends you know is it is it just a our social relations now just a kind of tick list um, but it, it's not that straightforward and one one lot of research will say one thing about the impact of um, mobile technology on social relations another piece of research will say something completely different um, so, and, and of course, even if these pieces of research said the same thing today, they'd probably say something different tomorrow.